Can one good Asian barber actually change your life? These viral transformations are making me think so. Let's run the clips. Why are you been growing your hair out, bro? I've been growing it since the pandemic. Just gonna let you take the wheels here. I'm coming here for the first real like quality cut. Definitely change it up, bro. Because your hair is so long, it really exposes the thinning on top. So we definitely need to take it shorter. We'll do something that complements your natural growth pattern in the back. Kind of like a natural, and then you can swoop it over a little bit, like, right. keeping it a little short. Oh, yeah. How'd you hear about me, bro? Um, just through Instagram, I saw your consultations, and I've heard about this barbershop in particular. You ready for this transformation? All right, let's do it. Hi, monster on the beat, ho, Bebo, any rat, nigga, he a free throw, man down, call like Amber Lambs, tell him. You're Asian, I'm Asian, <laughs> so there's not many Asian barbers. <laughs> I saw the one from Chantilly, the newest one. Oh, the, the Asian dude. Yeah. Okay. Centerville is right next to Tilly. You come from Centerville? Yeah. How far was that? Like two hours. Are we doing a text your friends today? Of course. My dad was cutting me up for like a uh, while. Did he give you a bowl cut? Something like that. I don't even know. I'm guessing you had to tell mom about driving or making a drive down here, right? Yeah. She, she didn't really care because my brother is down at VCU. It, it worked out basically. Yeah. This way you want to go. Lead up, got me thinking, babe. Tell me if you with it, cause I'm with it, babe. I haven't heard from you, and I'm in it, babe. Just tell me what to do. Boom! Oh, Listen, my man, God. This new Whoa. generation of Asian barbers is 10 out of 10. Thank you for your great work. Do you take any credit for this, Andrew? Because you had some viral hair cutting videos many years ago. Yeah, I mean, listen, if it inspired some of the young Asian barbers, if not, whatever, but I just love to see the work happen, man. This is this is next level stuff. Like, especially the dude with the balls. It's killed it, killed it. Listen, guys, today we have a list of 10 things in addition to getting a haircut that we could that could potentially change your life. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Number one, Andrew, get an expensive haircut. Obviously, let's be honest, guys. These transformations are not possible without a highly skilled barber. Highly skilled barbers are going to cost more money. Yeah, listen, I know that getting a $70 haircut every two weeks is outside of a lot of people's budget. I don't even do that. Honestly, I don't. I don't go to that step, but uh, you need to go to a well-trained barber at least a couple times. Here's my thing. when And I'm going to answer this question real quick. Can one good barber change your life? The answer is yes. I actually think so. Because when it comes to makeovers and looks maxing for a guy and looking your best, a haircut is usually one of the first things you got to look at. And you can go and pay for a good barber. This does not take any sort of like of your own skill and training to come up with these ideas. You go to a good barber, get the appointment and pay the money and ask a lot of questions. You know, a lot of these barbers uh, may know other aspects of aesthetics. Sometimes they're stylish themselves. Even if they're not, they're still gonna understand what works. I would compare it to hiring a really high tier educational trainer for the weight room, one or two sessions. And then that's gonna increase your own IQ. So even if you don't wanna keep paying that expensive trainer, you're gonna take that knowledge that is seeped into your brain forever. Yeah, my hope is that you pay for an expensive hair haircut once or twice i would say once or twi twice two to three times at least you gain the knowledge you feel confident you feel that inspiration and that encouragement and then you can figure out kind of how to get it at a cheaper level if you want right um i would say another big aspect is actually styling the hair i don't think that these guys in the transformation video are going to be able to necessarily look like that every day because a barber just styled their hair but if they do do it themselves they could get it to a seven out of ten or eight out of ten level from the instagram Instagram clips, right? right. Um, I just think people need to use more conditioner, less shampoo, because I think if you shampoo every day, unless you're working a manual labor job, you're stripping your hair off of a lot of oils. And here's some other stuff that they should do at the barbershop, but not everybody really includes it unless it's like a full scale barbershop. Andrew, uh, your eyebrows, your beard, your nose hairs, your ear hairs, even earwax, fingernails, toenails, body oh, hair. Oh, this is next level stuff. But actually, you, if you watch our latest barbershop video, I, 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 I did David's eyebrows a little bit. But anyways, guys, uh, yes, these are other side things first and foremost it's your head hair and your facial hair if you have it and then after that it definitely all those details about kind of shaping your eyebrows a little bit not getting the thin ones but just just shaping it up 
Uh, point number two, Andrew, what if you also just got new clothes? I mean, there's a lot of uh, stuff of, uh, you know, obviously there's like countless videos on right. YouTube about this. And um, I just think there's so many brands nowadays, low, middle, high. Obviously, this is the Kevin Wynn starter pack. This is the uh, Chad starter pack. However, there's also the Tim DeSaint, Andrew. This is almost like more of a designer, a creative look. Uh, Maybe you went to art school, film school type yeah. thing. Um, this you know, is really popping right now on YouTube. Yeah, you know what I would say as far as clothes? I do think clothes comes number two to the haircut, honestly. And I think that like if you're just stepping into the clothes game and you have no idea how to dress, try to figure out first how to get a white and black t-shirt to f look really good on you. That's the first step. If you can't even figure out what a good white or black t-shirt is on you and how to make that fit, you're probably not going to be able to make other good outfits. Right. Those are the most basic outfits, but you can survive on a good white and black t-shirt outfit. You really can't. No, it's true. Uh, number three, Andrew, what if you just worked out for one month, cut out carbs, refined sugars, and anything processed just uh, for a month? See how you feel yeah now you're talking about a little bit more discipline things that you can't just pay for because this actually requires you to do the work not just paying someone else like 50 dollars to do it for you but yeah i mean dude there's so many ways to work out cut your sugar do a fat like fast you people right. do 72 hour fast at least fast in the morning do at least intermittent fasting try it out if you have never tried intermittent fasting i suggest you try it. listen you know us we love delicious food i still love it but if you intermittent fast, you can feel better about eating that delicious food. Yeah, and it's, you know, you got to find the methods that work for you. For you, I know you like to intermittent fast. For me, I actually don't do it, but I just uh, cut out carbs completely or like probably 85% out of my diet. You like carbs more, so you're going to intermittent fast, but eat carbs. So you got to figure it out. And what I learned about fitness is that like you can't just play sports because a lot of times Andrew people build up uh they sweat a lot they do a lot of cardio but then their appetite increases and then they feel like they want to reward themselves afterwards and then they pig out and completely eliminate any calories that they burned during oh, the yeah. sport yeah, yeah, yeah I mean I think sports are great for social uh meeting friends and and having a bro circle and stuff so definitely be involved in some team sport but if you're just trying to get ripped you know abs start in the kitchen. That's that's a uh, fat. Yeah, and I think that there's a lot of sugar-free calorie stuff. And to be honest, a lot of artificial sweeteners, maybe they're not the best for your stomach. However, they are kind of a cheat code because you basically get that... Uh, that sugar feeling without actually consuming sugar. I would say cook a lot of whole foods in the mm -hmm. air fryer. There's a lot of Asian sauces and rubs, especially the rubs are really low calorie. You know, sometimes the sauces have a lot of sugar in them. Um, but it, you know what it is about cooking? First of all, you're a lot healthier, but actually you can appreciate what goes into a good uh, meal that you go out to eat because you more know what went into it because you're more familiar with the process. Um, point number four, Andrew, I would say have some sort of skin routine, uh, right? There, there's fancy ones. There's middle tier ones. I think the lowest maintenance ones are literally what? A cleanser, an exfoliator. You might not even need a toner and just a simple moisturizer. Yeah, and here's my recommendation. You can get it off Amazon. Uh, if you're an Asian skin person, uh, you could aim for the Asian brands, the Japanese or the Korean brands on Amazon that are highly rated. That's the easiest way to do it. Because they're more formulated for Asian skin. Yeah, or go into one of those face Asian face shops, which they have a lot in most any major city, any like of the 50%, like probably 30% of cities, they have some Asian skin shop. Walk into there, just chat with somebody for a little bit. Like get used to chatting about your skin and your hair with somebody. Like, don't be shy about that. No one's judging no. you. Like, if you go, even as a guy, you talk to a girl, uh, they'll they'll at least give you some pointers. Right, you should, most people have combo skin, by the way, which means you have dry spots and you have oily spots. Um, I would say the more you are outside and, you know, more exposed to the elements, you, you might need a more advanced skin routine, you know, depending on like your lifestyle and how exposed you are. And I always compare th everything in life is sort of like basketball. It's like there's an offense and a defense. The defense is sort of the environment that you're facing with your skin. The offense would be your skin routine. So if you're facing a challenging defense, you're going to need a more high powered offense. Uh, point number five. Um. Some people, they might need to just get outside, get some sun, or I don't know, like tanning is kind of viewed as like bad for your skin nowadays, but people just got to go outside and, and maybe join a run club. I know that's really trendy right now. Um, point number six, Andrew, just get your teeth cleaned at the dentist. 
Mm. Um, are you a fan of Crest Strips? For me, I know a lot of people use Crest Strips, but they hurt my teeth. So for, for me, I don't uh, use Crest Strips. Everybody's teeth is different, and everybody's teeth is going to build plaque or get stained at different levels. Um, some people can drink the same amount of coffee as someone else, and they'll get stained more. And that's just a fact. You can't fully control that. But uh, I would always, always talk to your dentist and obviously brush your teeth every day. I mean, that goes without saying, but I'm gonna tell you this. Some dudes, they need to get in the habit of brushing their tongue, scraping their tongue. A lot of bad breath actually, and this is from the dental world. I have a dentist friend. It comes from the throat and the gut. That's part of it too. So also gut health, but this is a side thing, but gut health and mouth health, as much as you, you know, throw in a mint and brush your teeth, that's not the only thing that's affecting your breath. Right. Uh, point number seven, this is really overlooked stress management and sleep. Uh, for example, cortisol management. Um, you know, that's your stress levels throughout your day, you know, different serotonin levels and different things like that. A sleep masks, blackout windows, breathe yeah. right strips. Huh. I really am a huge fan of taking magnesium for sleep. Uh, and I know that you're a melatonin guy. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, nasal strips though. Nasal strips. I cannot stress enough. A lot of people, they overlook this and I've converted a lot of people to nasal strips over the time. It doesn't have to be the name brand ones. Almost any nasal strip will do something for your Neomed nose. sinus rinse. Uh, number eight, I actually think a lot of eyes and ENT, which is, uh, ear, nose, throat is really underrated because a lot of people have suboptimal conditions for both like their eyes and then ENT stuff, but they just kind of live with it. So, cause you, until you really get an expert to, to take a look at that stuff and see if you're operating at least like a, at an eight out of 10 level, you could be like at a six out of 10. Mm. For example, I actually have uh, punctal plugs in my eyes to block one of the eye ducts from draining my eyes because I really get, uh, I have a lot of dry eye problems. But a lot of people actually don't get those addressed. Mm -hmm. um, point number nine, Andrew, just find some good role models you can relate to. Mm. And you know what I realized is that like a lot of guys, there's macro role models that kind of give you like macro motivation. Let's just say, for example, the most extreme example is David Goggins. David Goggins is like, go hard, go hard, run another mile, which is great. But his life is not like your life. Mm -hmm. So you that might be good to find some macro motivation, but you need to understand how that actually applies to the life that you're living. Right. So you need to find some micro mo role models and people who can tell you how to apply macro motivational fuel to actually your own detailed situation. Right, right, right. And especially most of the role models are not Asian too on mm -hmm. the internet. So it's like, you know. And um, last but not least, guys, you know, understand that, you, you, you can find advice from guys that are a lot of people, I think they give a lot of advice online are not Asian. So some people, they need somebody with a relatable life to like consume and marinate in the advice, but other people can watch people that are not like them and learn from them. Mm -hmm. So I think that you just got to find uh, the people that speak to you that can ultimately give you the most tailored advice. And uh, yeah, I think that that's ultimately what these videos taught me because I think that the reason why these haircutting videos are getting millions and millions of views and all these shares is because people are just like, this guy looks completely different in one hour. Yeah. I mean, I hope these videos inspire you. I mean, the haircutting videos, the transformation videos. I know like drastic plastic surgery transformation videos is not as relatable, uh, but definitely haircut stuff. That is totally possible. And once you see the guy who has like thinning hair and he's a little, little chubby and, you know, guy, and you see him totally transform, you're like, oh, wow. Like, that's what it could happen. I'm not saying his hair is going to look like that every day. I'm not saying he's going to get that haircut every day. It's not going to be styled by a professionally trained barber every single morning but you know the potential now and i think that's the key and if you cannot even get yourself up to pay a little bit of money for a trained barber and talk to them at least two to three times at least two to three right times. just look at it like you're investing in tuition or something yeah like dude that. it's not you can afford it two to three times i'm not saying do it every 10 days i'm not saying that i get it but man you got to talk to somebody that can because looking good is an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing, man. Right. So anyway, guys, let us know your tips that are similar to, you know, just, you know, helping guys feel their best, look their best in the comments section below. I just thought that we had to shout out to these Asian barbers because they're doing some great work. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.